Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to discuss repeaters. Now, if you're new to the ham radio hobby or looking into it, you probably heard this term, but don't really know what it is. We're going to discuss that right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. So welcome back, guys. Uh, this is Ham Radio for Non-Techies. If you're new to this channel, what we do here is we try to simplify the terms and procedures and things that are involving ham radio to make it just a little bit easier to understand. And I always try to get you guys the straight dope on what's going on. If you have a question about something, I try to answer directly and keep these videos somewhat short, but try to be thorough with my information. So today's discussion is about ham radio repeaters. Now, again, like I said, if you're new to the hobby, you probably heard this term run around. You might know a little bit about it, but what exactly is a repeater? What's it made of? How are they built? What do they do? So we're going to jump into that right here. I got a little presentation to show you, a couple of little things. We'll just uh, try to get it explained as quickly as possible. So without further ado, let's pop over to my desktop and see what's going on. All right, so what is a ham radio repeater? An amateur radio repeater is an electronic device that receives a weak or low signal, say from your radio, and retransmits it at a higher level or higher power so the signal can cover longer distances without degradation. Similar to what you see in the picture here. Another way to look at it would be in... Uh, this always happens. There we go. Oh. So you have your antenna here, which is where the repeater would be on. And say you're on your HT, which is only transmitting maybe 5 watts, 8 watts, something like that. And you want to reach somebody who's 20 miles away on the other side of town. Well, you transmit into a repeater by programming your radio to hit the repeater. The repeater receives a signal, retransmits it at a much higher power, so it can reach somebody across town another 10 miles away. That's the basic setup of it. Um, so we're going to get into a little bit more about what this, what this involves. So let's go into here, the how, why, and who. How are they used? Well, most of the time, ham radio clubs will use them. They're used for special events, local ham nets, like my, my, I've talked before about this. My local net, uh, or my local club, has a daily net, and we use a repeater to reach everybody, you know, far and wide around the, around the greater Houston area. Uh, and, of course, local ham radio operators. Whenever I want to get on VHF, UHF, I'm always on that frequency, either in my truck, on my base station, or even on one of my little HTs, which are all programmed to hit that repeater. So why use a repeater? Well, instead of being limited by line of sight, a repeater allows for longer distance communication between two operators through the use of a repeater. So you have kind of two choices. By using a repeater, you can reach people much longer distance. Like I'm able to talk to people 30, 40 miles away or greater, depending on the, on the conditions, uh, using this repeater that's, by, that's nearby uh, where I am. Uh, however, if you did not have that, you're pretty much kind of stuck with what they call simplex, which is line of sight, in which case, you know, for simplex to work effectively, you want to have, you know, more power, your antenna needs to be really high up so it can, you know, it can reach somebody else, and you're still going to be limited. You're not, I mean, you're probably not going to reach people really, really far unless you got your antenna way up there and you're running a pretty decent amount of power. Um, now, there are many types of repeaters out there. Most of them are used for 2-meter and 70-centimeter bands. And there are some instances, although I have not run into them myself, there are some instances of having HF repeaters, say, like on 10-meter on and stuff like that. Um, they can be used for both FM and digital modes. So how do repeaters work? You have a downlink, which is your receive frequency, and you have an uplink, which is your transmit frequency. These frequencies are different, often called an offset. So in our case, on VHF, our offset is a negative 600 shift. So if I'm transmitting, or if, I, if, I, if our repeater is on 146.940, when I push my little PTT button here, I'm actually transmitting on 146.340 because we have a negative shift down from the actual uh, uh, the uh, uplink frequency, I believe it is. So where can you find repeaters in your area? Well, there's a couple places you can go. Uh, you have repeaterbook.com. You also have R Finder, and there's probably some other ones out there. Those are the ones I, you know, the ones that are most popularly used. Now, if you're using uh, RT system software to program your HTs or program any of your radios, some uh, inside that program there are ways you can import. You can just do a search for and import 
data from repeater book or from our finder systems and other places where you can get, you know, like say you're going to go on a trip and you want to pre-program your setup so that you have all repeaters from point A where you are to point B wherever your destination is. So you can actually get a list of all those and, and, and uh, filter out the ones you don't want. Say you're only going to be on two meter, you can just filter out all the other repeaters that might be in that, that stretch and just program the ones you think you're going to need or might use from where you're going, from where you are to where you're going. All right, so let's go jump into the nitty gritty here. And this is where it's going to get a little bit more geeky, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So this is the basic makeup of an amateur radio repeater. So we start off, let me get my thing going here. And we start off having a power supply. So you have your AC power supply, which would then go into a 12 volt DC power supply, which is gonna power quite a few things. Uh, first place is gonna be powering the receiver and it's gonna be powering the transmitter. So you see here the transmitter is set. I just did this for my purposes where I, where I am. Our transmitter is set for 146.94. But when we're transmitting from our radios to the repeater, we're actually transmitting on 146.34, which is where that negative 600, the negative 600 uh, shift comes in. So we have that going on. Well, these things have antennas that go out to what's called a duplexer. So real quick, before we get too crazy with this, what is a duplexer? A duplexer is a device that allows bi-directional communication over a single channel. In radio communication systems, it isolates the receiver from the transmitter while permitting them to share a common antenna. So going back to our thing here, you see we have our transmitter and our receiver. Antennas going into both, both, in, both antennas for these, uh, these items are going into our duplexer here. So that duplexer is then hard-lined with LMR coax over to a lightning arrestor. Then we have more coax coming out of the lightning arrestor and going up to our antenna, which is hopefully mounted as high as possible. Now, I think ours here, probably a couple hundred feet up. I mean, it, it's got a really good reach around the city, so I'm pretty sure our, our uh, I, I can't pinpoint. I know where the, where the repeater is in my area. I just don't know which module is our repeater on the actual tower. But anyway, that's your antenna would be up really high, allowing it to transmit a much wider range around your area. So coming out of the transmitter and the receiver, this would now go into a sound card, which is then connected via USB to say a Raspberry Pi computer. The Raspberry Pi, of course, needs power. So it's got a five volt regulator. That's uh, usually USB or USB-C. And that goes back into your 12 volt power supply. So the only other thing left from here is you have a network connection. So you have an Ethernet cable going out to your network, going out into the actual nuts and bolts of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, repeater room. So that is the basics of a, a, a repeater. This is only one way that it's done. It's one of the ones I found online. I was doing some research on. I wanted to bring you guys a show and kind of explain the nuts and bolts of this without going overly crazy with it. But I wanted to make sure you had a better idea of what was actually going on within a repeater. So with that being done, I believe that is the end of that. So let's get out of here. We'll clear that and turn that off. Okay. So as I mentioned before, if you're trying to find repeaters in your area, I mean, you know, large metropolitan areas are probably going to have a whole lot more repeaters than somebody's living out in the more um, out in the sticks. So you have to kind of search around and see, but you most likely you've probably got a repeater somewhere nearby. And if not, you've always got simplex. You just have to have a much higher antenna and maybe a little bit more power to reach people uh, that you're trying to contact. So going over to repeater book, you can sign up. I think it's free. Uh, so you can, you can log in. And then over here, you can do North American repeaters. So if I click on that, we'll give it a second here to catch up because the internet's running slow today. Okay, so now I might want to choose my state. And that'll bring up the repeaters in my state. So it's showing here there's 1,779 Texas repeaters in the database. Okay, I don't need access to all 1,700 of these things. Most of them are going to be way out of range for me anyway. So maybe I just want to look for the two-meter stations in my area. So I'll filter out by clicking on Band. And now I get a list 
of 669 repeaters in my area or in the in, in Texas. And I'm sure there's probably a way to kind of bring it down to more localize it for your immediate area. But you can also just kind of look and see what you're what you find your county here. And if you see your county in there, then there should be some repeaters you can look at and you just try them out by programming your radio and you know, transmit and see if you can reach somebody. So in my case, like I said, it's 146.940. So I'm going to scroll down because I already know this ahead of time. And it's going to be a second. So if I scroll down to 146.94. And let's see, where am I? There we go. So 146.94, negative 0.6 megahertz shift. And we have a tone. So all, all repeaters, most repeaters are going to have a tone. So in your HT or in your actual any of your any of your ham radios, when you're setting up the frequency, you then set up what the shift is going to be. And most of the time for VHF UHF, it's going to be a an offset of of, of 0.6 megahertz. And then you want to set up your tone. So that'd be your CTCSS tone. Some of your radios, your radios, diff, different radios uh, call it something a little different, but it's all pretty much going to be the same. So in our case, the tone is 1.167.9 for both. And that covers the Houston, Missouri City Antenna Farm. Shows you here it's in Fort Bend. It's the guy who runs it. Uh, it's currently open. It runs on FM. And you got more information. Click on it. You can find, like, you know, get like a vague map of where it's located and stuff like that. So that's basically how you would use this to find repeaters in your area. And doing this allows you to open up your network and, re and, and not open your network, but expand your ability to reach other people out there and really get out and have fun and start using the hobby once you're licensed and uh you know go with it like i said earlier uh, a lot of these things will integrate if you buy a radio if you're unless you're just you know really good at programming you're most likely going to end up buying the rt system software or something similar uh i know for sure that the rt systems uh which you have to pay for is it's an extra extra fee on top of your radio and other equipment um it does have integration to go into our finder or into repeater book to import uh, repeaters in your area. So I find it really useful information, and I, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's go back and wrap up. So in conclusion, guys, um, that's basically what a repeater is. That's how they work. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but I wanted to find the simplest way that I could quickly and efficiently explain it to you. Um, I actually had other things planned for today, but Mother Nature decided to open up the sky and I was not able to uh, do the outdoor event that I was going to do with you guys today and kind of show you some cool stuff. So when the sky decides to cooperate and it dries up a little bit, I will uh, definitely have that ready to go. Uh, if you guys like this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. It helps YouTube algorithm show my video to more people and lets them know that I've got some good stuff going on here and people want to see it. And, yo, know, if you like this video in particular, if I've earned it, I would ask that you uh, please subscribe to my channel so I can continue bringing you guys more stuff. Click on the little bell. It'll notify you when I have new videos out. And I try to put out, I generally try to put out one or two videos a week if I can come up with something that I think is important or something that people might want to see. Um, also, don't forget, we have hamradiofornontechies.com, which is my website, where I have a bunch of information on there. If you're learning about ham radio or you want to get licensed in ham radio, I have all the resources on there, phone apps, uh, uh, websites you can go to for practice tests. I have a whole list of books and things that I recommend for you to go and you can purchase right from the website. Click on it takes you right over to Amazon. You can grab the books and buying those things helps me out a little bit if you purchase. But uh, yeah, so you got you got a lot of resources available to you. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, until then. My name is Scott. My call sign is KI5NPL. This is Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.